Praise the Lord. Thank you, sister. Amen. Feels good, doesn't it? Amen. Just feel just to feel the presence of God. Amen. Mm. Wrote a book on the presence of God. It's not out yet, but boy, it feels good in here. I want to have something to say before I read my text over here, anyone? You say, preacher, I just got something to say. don't want you to preach. I just, if you want to praise God. Anybody over here? How about in this section? Thank you for some of you that came. Anyone over here just want to praise God? That's okay to praise God. Anyone over here? Over here? All right, turn with me to Ephesians. Boy, oh boy. I tell you. I don't know. I don't know how he could love me, but he did. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I don't know when he looked at me some 58 years ago, couldn't talk plain, stuttered, and he called me anyway. Oh, wow. With me saying, God, I can't even say the books of the Bible without murdering them. And you want me to do what? He said, I want you to preach. He said, you're going to pastor for 20 years. Then he said, then you're going to go into a special ministry after I take Diane home. And the reason I'm calling you is because what I want you to do, only you can do with my help. And I said, Lord, I want to love you. I want to love you more than anyone in the whole world. And he helped me. And here I am standing in front of Beacon Baptist Church. Didn't even know you was anywhere in the world, but God did. And God is doing a special work. I know he is. I feel it in my bones, Brother Raven. I really do. I'm almost at the point of not not knowing exactly what route you, I need to go. But you know, when, when I get into these situations, you know what I do? I do what I tell my preacher friends. Be still. Be still, Benny. Don't get in a hurry. Amen. Look in Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 13. The Bible says, Wherefore, Paul's talking here, Wherefore I desire that ye faint not, or do not lose heart. This crazy world we live in is throwing us all a curveball. There's a lot of hatred, a lot of hurt, a lot of tribulation, a lot of trials out there. And God is saying to us here at Beacon Baptist Church tonight, hey, do not lose heart. 
do not quit. It's not quitting time. It's not. Well, what kind of time is it? Keep it going. Keep our eyes on God. Amen. Keep his love in our hearts. Let it be active. Love it. Love one another. Care for one another. That's the time it is right now. It doesn't matter what trial it is and what tribulation it may be. It doesn't matter. None of that. What matters is, do we have his love active in our hearts? You know, you can do anything if you have the love of God in your heart. And it's guiding you. Amen. Oh, the love of God. The love of God is so wonderful. And when I look, when I look down at the word of God and then I find out who love, who love is. Who is love? Love is God. And he lives inside of you. Every one of you. He lives inside of you. And, and because of that love, as I read to you this morning, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Aren't you proud that when Jesus went in back to heaven to sit on the right hand of the Heavenly Father, aren't you glad he sent the Comforter to, to, to this crazy earth? to live in us, to guide us, to teach us. The Holy Spirit, someone said, who is he to you, Brother Beckham? Oh, he's my comforter, he's my friend, and he's everything. Amen. And because of the love of God, I tell you, I have the joy. I see a lot of Christians walking around, and they look as if they have just ate a bag of lemons. Oh, they're so sad. They just walk around. Let me tell you, God is alive. God is, is very much alive. And, 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 and not only is he love, but he is joy. Would you look at that verse with me again as I read it to you this morning? John uh, 15, verse 11. And, and uh, someone, I was in a church uh, a few years ago, and uh, the church, I don't know, uh, it, it was just going through a trying time, and everybody was just sitting there. And they looked like they were just miserable. And uh, I said, do you have the joy of the Lord? And someone said yes or no or yes. And I said, would you tell your face that? You know, tell your face that you are joyful John 15, verse 11, look at it. These things have I spoken in you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. I don't want just a little bit of joy, Brother Raymond. I want it to be full. And uh, I believe that's God's will for all of his children uh, is to have that. And, and second, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 says, rejoice I'm rejoicing. No, you're not. God says, no, you're not. Rejoice evermore. And then Nehemiah 8 and verse 10, the Bible says, For the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's the strength that, that uh, Paul felt when he was snake bitten and shipwrecked and all those tribulations and, and all those trials. You know where he found his joy? He didn't find his joy in a book or, or in, in, in uh, anything else. He found his joy. Where did he find his joy? He found his joy in the Lord. 
Amen. Psalms 37 is one of my favorite psalms. And the Bible says in that psalm that we are to delight ourselves in the Lord. Amen. We may not find joy in the tribulation right now, and we may not find joy in the trials that we have to face right now, but let me tell you, we can find the joy in the Lord. Would you turn with me to Psalms 5 and verse 11? But let all those that put their trust in thee. Is this Bible? It's Bible, isn't it? But let all those that, that's you and me. Let all of us put our trust in thee. Let them ever shout for joy. Because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. Church, listen, we are to to be a joyful people. Amen. A joyful people. I calm down sometimes in my meetings because I don't want to, I, I really don't want you to get excited because I'm, I'm just excited. I want you to get excited because God's joy is in your heart. A lot of times people get tied up in the, in the message or in the way the preacher is preaching. I said to the Lord 23 years ago because I came out of that the count meeting and all that stuff. And I said to the Lord, Brother Raymond, I said, I never want, I never want to be guilty of entertaining. I never want to be the one that brings that love into somebody or that joy or that peace. God, help me. Help me. And then I want you to notice Love, joy. What is the next one? I look around. 48 churches a year. Hundreds of people, maybe thousands of people. And when I stand and I said, God, help me to bring this point out. Why is it so important? Why is love, joy, and peace so important? Because those three virtues are somehow linked together in a particular way. Love is the foundation of our Christian faith. Look with me to Galatians 5, 13 and 14 and listen to what God is saying here. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. And all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And where there is love in the heart, joy will follow, and this will bring peace. Boy, we need peace in our churches, don't we? We need peace in our homes. We need peace in our individual hearts. And the Bible plainly tells us in the book of Colossians to let the peace. See, uh, it's our responsibility. You say, Brother Beckham, uh, what are you saying? I'm saying if you're not peaceful tonight, tonight, it's not because of God. It's not because of the Holy Spirit. It's not because of this church. It's not because of brother and sister Raymond. If you are not experiencing these things in your heart, would you do me a favor and do you a favor? Would you go home and look in the mirror and then you'll see the problem? Look in John 14, 20, 27 with me. Talking about peace. You may be sitting in that pew right now and you're saying, 
Brother Beckham, I don't know how you know it, but I am, I'm not experiencing peace right now. I'm struggling. I'm struggling with my job. I'm struggling with my home. I'm struggling with myself. There is no peace in my heart, none at all. What do I do? Turn to him. Turn to him. Look in John 14, 27. The Bible says, is it okay to read the Bible? Amen. Peace I have with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Look in John 16, 33. The Bible says, these things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In me, he says, in the world ye shall have tribulations, but be ye of good cheer. I, over, I have overcome the world. And that same God that overcome the world can help you to do the same. But you have to let love, joy, peace Rule in your life. It has to be active. It has to be. And I'll quote, I'll quote Galatians chapter 3 and verse 15 again to you. It says, and let the peace of God. I'll say it again tonight. It's your responsibility. It's Brother Benny's responsibility to allow God's peace to flood my heart. Amen. And then there's a word in this lineup of words. And the word is long suffering. Would you look at that word for me? What does long suffering mean? It means simply to suffer long. Let me ask you are you sweet? Are you calm in every situation? You say, of course not. Why not? Why can't Brother Benny be calm in every situation? Why can't I love in every situation? Why can't I be joyful in every situation? Why? It's not your fault. It's my fault. Mm, mm, mm. Just suffer long. Just allow God to do what he wants to do in your hearts. Amen. You know, one preacher, one, one guy walked out the door, Brother Raven, in a church not long ago, and he said, Brother Beckham, you put me to sleep tonight. I said, I put you to sleep. That's not my intention. And he said, well, that monotone voice. I think God put me in the monotones sometimes just to see how spiritual the church is. <laughs> I really believe that because I'll tell you, I get all excited usually and I'm bubbling over. And then some nights I walk in the pulpit and the Lord said, well, tonight's one of those nights. I said, oh, no, please, God, let me just jump up and down and be happy. He said, not tonight. I want to see how spiritual my church is. Amen. And he uses someone like me to stand in front of you and talk. And, and I see and my heart goes out for you. You sit there and go. And I want to come down to you, and I want to sit by you and say, I'll hold you up. <laughs> Just listen to me preach. Amen? Oh, my. This is good stuff. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering. Well, there, here's, the, here's the thing. Here's the thing. See, you say, well, I don't have those things in my life. Brother Beckham, I'm struggling. Hey, wait a minute. 
If you're born again, you have these things in your heart. So if, if, you, if you're struggling, you might need to check up. Amen? There's nothing wrong with being honest with yourselves. Ah, walked the aisle when I was 12. I got saved at the age of 16. What a difference in those two. Just walking the aisle and getting saved. Not even the same thing. Amen. And then I want you to notice something else in this list of nine graces is the word gentleness. Gentleness is thoughtful, consideration, courteous, kindly actions, the delicate ministering of, of love. Oh, yeah. Gentleness in the house of God. You never know what your actions may actually say. You know, I said to the Lord years ago, I said, Father, I want, I want to be a gentle person. I want to be a loving, joyful, peaceful, long-suffering. But Lord, I want to be gentle. And you say, Brother Beckham, that's not very manly. I beg your pardon. It's like my Savior. He was a gentle person. And he showed it. Amen. And I want to be the same way. Ephesians 4 and verse 32, uh, it says, Be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. I said, Hallelujah, Father, that's what I want to be right there. My dad, all my childhood and all my adult life, and my dad told me, he said, Denny, a man don't cry. I want you to understand that. And he taught me all my life that a man didn't cry. You have to be tough, and you have to do this, and you have to do that. And, and um, I was 27 years old, a student at Baptist Bible College in Springfield, and my dad called me, and he said, son, listen to me. I just got saved at 5 o'clock this morning. And he said, I want to talk to you about some things I taught you. And after a while, he was reading his Bible one day, and it talked about crying. It taught me all my life not to cry. And I was hard. And I, was, I thought I was doing what my dad wanted me to do. And he called me up and he said, son, I got something to tell you that I found out this morning in my Bible reading. I said, really? What you find out, dad? He said, I found out it's okay for a man to cry. Because I read this morning that Jesus wept. I said, oh boy, I wish you had learned that a long time ago. <laughs> Amen. It would have made my life much happier. Yes, gentleness. There's nothing wrong with a man to be gentle. Because I, the way I look at it, if you are gentle and you're practicing it, that's just practicing being like Christ. Amen. And then there's the word goodness. We as believers must learn with Paul, for I know that in me, that in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. There's no good in me. But there is good in my Savior. Amen. I, I just love it. I love it. And then there's good works in verse 14. And let our, let our also, and let us also lean, learn to maintain good works for necessary uses that they may be unfruitful. We need, to, we need to show good works. 
What do we need to do, Brother Beckham, to, to have revival? Well, I believe what God has taught us tonight is that we need these, these fruit active in our lives and we need to learn to follow the Holy Spirit. Amen. The, by the way, it says that it, these things are the fruits of the Spirit, are the fruit of the Spirit, not the fruits, but the fruit of the Spirit. And then there's faith. Would you look at um, Hebrews chapter 3 and 1 and, and 2? Would you look at that verse with me? we almost done. But I want you to listen. We as Christians need to learn from our example, the Lord Jesus Christ. And let me read this to you. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and the high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, who will who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all of his house. I don't know about you, but that's my aim in life, is just to be faithful. Amen? Yeah, I want to be faithful. And then there's meekness. What is it? It's humility. It's lowliness of mind which Christ is our example of that and our pattern of that. Meekness. And then there's temperance. This word contains the idea of having mastery over self-control. having mastery over our lives, over our temple, and all that stuff. You may be asking, Brother Peckham, are you going to be a little more excited tomorrow? Don't know. If we don't have on this one like God wants us to, he may have me to do it again tomorrow night. So what do we do? We need to just simply... Obey the Holy Spirit as he had pointed out all of these things. As I'm preaching, I have learned, Brother Raven, I have learned to preach to me. Every sermon in the last couple of years that I have preached, I have preached it to me. One night I, I, was, I was preaching to me and I didn't really want to hear it. And the Holy Ghost put me under so much conviction. I just shut my Bible, I shut my notebook. And I remember walking off of the platform and as I was walking off the platform, I was thinking, what am I doing? What am I doing? And it dawned on me that I tell folks to come to the altar, and I invite them to, and I invite them to get right with God. And then God began to show me why I was walking off the platform. It wasn't just to walk off the platform. It was for me to kneel at the altar. And I remember kneeling at the altar. And for 30 minutes, they tell me I was crying out to God because I was under so much conviction of what I was preaching. And I got done. I didn't even look at the congregation. I just walked back up on the platform. And the Lord said, Benny, now you can finish. But you was in no shape to finish the message tonight. And I got right with the Lord. And ever since that time, I'm very sensitive. And if the Lord tells me to quit, I quit. Amen. 
I just do. Went through all the preaching workshop classes and all the homiletical classes and all that. But God just spoke to me. So now it's your turn to obey God. I've shared, I've shared the Bible with you. And I've said it in such a way that I believe that you can understand it. Amen. I believe everything I've said you can understand. And uh, that's my goal, so that you can understand. In a moment, we're going to ask the pianist to come and, and play a song of her choice. Let's start out tonight seeking true revival. Not a bunch of noise and not a bunch of activities and stuff. But let's, let's tonight... Look into the mirror of our soul and say, Father, take that away from me. Take this away from me. Help me to have the fruit of the Spirit active in my life. And Lord, help me to help my church to have true revival and not just a meeting. We have, a, we have enough meetings. We need True revival. Amen. And I think in my 23 years of doing this, I have seen a touch of revival here and there. But it was only when the church was honest. It was only when Brother Beckham was honest with himself. I have messages that God wants me to deliver but if I'm not right, I can't deliver them. So, Beacon Baptist Church, listen. Can we all be honest here tonight? Moms and dads and grandparents and teenagers and children. Can we all be honest here tonight? Like, have I read my Bible regularly? Have I prayed on a consistent basis? Have I been out soul winning lately? Am I tithing? All of these things must be in place before we can have true revival. And when it happens, you'll know it. So as we all stand, the orders are open.